What's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to create the liquid UI effect within Rive. This is exactly what it looks like and this is exactly what I'm going to be showing you how to build today step by step. And what's really cool is it's very flexible. You can change up the colors and the background and the foreground elements that are in the goo effect itself. So let's get started. All right, let's go ahead and just specify 500 by 500 is a new artboard. I might just drag it out a bit. The size isn't really that important. Um, the actual artboard color is important because that will influence the colors of what you're working with. So I'm just going to use a color I already had planned out, and that is that color right there. That's B5DFDF. Okay. So after we have that, now what we want to do is create another rectangle. Hit R on your keyboard. And we're going to make it the entire size of uh, the artboard. You could put that into a layout and make it, you know, fluid, but this is just a simple demo, not a big deal. Um, the reason for this particular rectangle is it's an overlay that will have a couple of um, fills with two different blend modes. We'll get to that part in a second. I'm going to go ahead and just hide this for a second. And then underneath it, let's hit O on your keyboard, the letter O for the ellipse tool. And let's create eh, an ellipse right around that size. We'll get it centered here vertically and horizontally. And then this goes underneath the rectangle layer. And for this color, we want to make sure that we do turn on feathering. All right, so you turn it on right there. And if I look at my reference code, I want to make sure everything is evened up and matched up. We're going to change this to 16 or so. And for the color, I'm going to use a specific color. And again, I'll show you by experimenting with the colors how you could change everything drastically, the background and the image uh, or whatever it is that you're blurring or you're making the goo effect uh, itself. So that color code is, let's see here, 131215. All right. And now let's go back to our rectangle layer. So we want to do it right here by clicking this and we'll choose uh, color burn for this one. All right, and then we're going to right click and duplicate that. And this one, the bottom one, is gonna change to color dodge. So color dodge for this one. There we go. Now, uh, it looks kind of interesting, kind of strange. <laughs> uh, watch what happens though if we take anything underneath it. So let's take this rectangle layer right here. Um, temporarily, we're just gonna lock it. Um, and then we can take our ellipse and duplicate it and there we go we got our goo effect but i wanted to kind of show you a couple things real quick before we actually get to the design of this little menu system um, that you can really play around with the degree to which things are being blended um, for instance if i go out here and i select both of our ellipses and we change the amount of feathering you could see you could really make it kind of interesting looking or you can really pull it down maybe to around four or five and it reduces the effect, the goo effect. So obviously the higher the feather, the more you're gonna have this um, sort of gooey effect occurring like this. So, I mean, just think about this. This alone, like it's, it's a really exaggerated example. You could do some really cool visual effects with this. All right, so let's just go back to where it was. And um, if we go back to the rectangle layer, we can also change the colors associated with the two fills in order to change things up even further. So I have hard-coded values right here. I'll show you what they are in a second. There we go. All right. So I wanted this color scheme, so that's why I changed to these colors right here. Again, if you take these and you start really playing around with the colors, you can see you can create some pretty crazy, interesting effects that then would be, you know, animate animatable if that's an actual word so very very cool stuff let's go back to where that was and let's say we're pretty happy with this for the overall goo effect okay so the first thing i'll do is kind of put this maybe right there we'll duplicate another one and put it roughly around the same spot all right and i'm going to go over to figma where i have some icons so this is the first icon if we right click this we choose copy as svg and we'll paste this in. All right, we'll call this bookmark. We'll drag that sucker in right there. All right, and let's make it the same background color. All right, so this is gonna be the default one without anything being hovered over. And then we're gonna go back and I have to do this 
a few more times. So we'll right click as SVG. All right, and there we go. That is everything. Um, it's just four layers. Now, of course, we have this being on top um, simply because the back one, let's say, uh, we could just take this and, and make the blend or the opacity 0%. And this is what it's going to look like when it's hovered over. We're going to do that one more little kind of circle thing. Uh, let's get over here. So we're going to make it real small. All right. And yeah, maybe we'll do something interesting like that. Okay. So we have our four ellipses. And this is going to be rotating around only when it's hovered over. So we're also going to create um, another rectangle, which is going to be kind of like a hitbox, as they call it. And that means this is just going to be, not, it's going to be invisible, but it's something that we're going to target in the state machine so that when we hover over this, anywhere inside of this section right here, it's going to initiate the, uh, the interaction. So we'll call this hitbox up here. Let's switch to the animate tab. Now we're going to go ahead and create, let's uh, double click the timeline one and rename that to idle. All right, and so the idle state is basically where we just want to specify a few keyframes just at the very beginning um, to show what it looks like when the app first loads, when it's not hovered over. So this is the unhovered state. So we just kind of have to reverse everything right here. So to do that, um, let's go ahead and lock that layer. We'll go ahead and move this in. All right, and then we'll go ahead and move this in as well. It'll snap into place once it's centered. And then additionally, we also want to hide all of the uh, little icons that we have. So if we take those four, actually, no, we don't want to, we want to keep the bookmark one active. So just those three, um, hit zero. And then our little bookmark will hit 100%. Okay, so for now, that's fine. And now what we want to do is create another timeline. And for this timeline, we'll just call it hover. So double click, rename it to hover. Oh, I got Campbell case there. Let's say, there we go. SpongeBob case rather. All right. And then now this is the hover version, which is almost in, but we still have to specify those keyframes. So there was a keyframe on the X axis for this one. And then for this one as well, the circle here. And then there was also keyframes for the visibility of these three elements. So that's put at 100% right there. And then finally, also the bookmark needs to be a keyframe at 0% to hide that. Okay, so let's get that, that initial interaction working and then we'll get this rotating thing working thereafter. So now what we do is under layer one in the state machine, we have our entry point going to idle, which is what we want. So if we hit um, the space bar, we'll see what this looks like. We'll be able to hide this too, this little thing at the top. Um, then what we want to do is drag in the hover state. Now, before we do this, we want to create a Boolean value in the input section right down here. So click plus, and we're going to choose Boolean. We're going to change this Boolean value. Uh, let's see. We'll change that name to bookmark hover. And then we have to have two listeners for the hover on and off state on that hitbox that we created. So uh, we click plus. Now, I already have that selected, this thing. So let me back up there. Del uh, control Z a couple times. What we want to do is select the hitbox. And then we'll choose input. And then this is going to be hitbox hover on. And so on point enter, we want to change the bookmark hover value to true. That means it's being hovered on. We're gonna right click and duplicate that listener and change this to hover off. All right, and so for this, we simply change it to false. Everything else stays the same on point, except for pointer exit or enter needs to be changed to exit. Okay, oh, okay, now, now that we have that, we create a connection right here from idle to hover. And then we click on the little directional arrow here and we're going to specify uh, a condition. The condition is, is we change our bookmark hover or that we don't change it, but if the condition is true, it's gonna go over to the hover section. Then, now if I just hit play, you can see it's instant and if I hover off, it doesn't go back. 
So what we need to do is drag in another instance of idle, drag a connection to it, click on this conditional area, add a condition, bookmark hover is false, it goes back to idle, and then if it goes from idle there, we have to create a connection back. And this is the final step for this part. And this is gonna be true. That's what this uh, general scaffolding looks like. So now if I hover over, we go back and forth. Now it's instant, and the way we fix that is we can target, um, we can specify a duration. So let's put, a, put in like 250 for the milliseconds right here for the duration. And then we could also give it some easing too. So we can enable this. And then we'll repeat this process right there. Easing. And then finally right here as well. So 250, easing in like that. Let's try it now. All right, let me zoom out just a bit. All right, very cool. So now let's get this little hover effect or little orbital thing orbiting around. So let's create another timeline and we'll call this one rotate. Now for rotate, right here, we're going to have a single keyframe that starts at the beginning and it's gonna be on the rotation axis right there, we put a keyframe. And then we go all the way to the end and specify 360. Or if you want to go the other direction, negative 360. Finally, because we want this to loop, we choose a loop. And then we also, I'm gonna reduce the playback speed because that's really fast to like 0.3. All right, so why is that not working? Oh, that's why we're rotating on a center axis. But don't worry, not a big deal. Let's go back to the design tab. With it selected, we hit Y. Now this allows us to change the uh, origin anchor point to the center of this element that we wanted to orbit around essentially. So now we go back and there we go. All right, sort of cool. Now what we could do in order for get to, to get this all working correctly, we need to duplicate this or just create a new timeline. We'll call this rotate off and all we have to do is take our ellipse four, which is the tiny one, and change the opacity to 0%. We'll go back to rotate and also change the opacity at the beginning to 100%. All right, so that is all we need to do there. State machine, we create one more layer right here. And this is for handling the logic of the orbiting little orb <laughs> or whatever you wanna call it. So let's do, um, yeah, we're coming into, let's see, let's do, sorry, I'm looking at my reference code. Yeah, we'll just go straight to rotate from entry. All right, and this is only um, going to do it if bookmark hover is true. All right, then we'll put rotate off. This only goes there to off state if bookmark hover is off or false rather create another connection back, and we'll do the same thing. So this is bookmark hover is false. false. No, no, if it's true, true, there we yeah. go. That, that one's false, false. this yeah. one's true. Um, and then we're gonna have the issue where it's like instant animation, which let's just give it a shot. Hit your space bar. Oh, oh we don't see, or we see it still currently. No big deal, we'll, we'll figure that out. It's almost working as we intend it. So if bookmark hover is true, it's going to rotate. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is go back to the design tab because I don't wanna see that initially and we're just gonna set the visibility to zero by default. All right, so now we go back and there we go, check that out. Now what's cool is you could do things like, I um, mean, if you didn't keyframe anything specific uh, to the size, for instance, we can make this larger and it'll still work. Let's play it one more time. And look at that, there we go. Very cool little interaction.